Before you actually sit down, gentlemen, it's very hot. Please remove your jackets and women as well if you have jackets on um, because it's extremely warm in here. So, um, would you all like to be seated? Thank you. So, welcome to the meeting of the full council this evening. I'm the Mayor of Rugby, Councillor Maggie O'Rourke, and will be chairing the meeting tonight. This meeting is being web streamed to the public through the council's YouTube channel. During the meeting, if you wish to speak, please use the uh, push button to talk on the microphone in front of you. Before we, uh, and also, if you want to speak, please can you stand up? Um, I know we've got used to hands on uh, when we were doing it all on teams, but you need to stand up, please. Uh, before we begin the formal agenda, I will ask the Chief Executive to provide details of the evacuation procedure for those present. Chief Executive. Oh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillors, there's no fire drill scheduled in the building this evening. If the fire alarm sounds, then please make your way out of the building, down the main staircase, out of the main doors of the town hall, and congregate at the entrance to Caldecott Park. An officer of the council will give instructions on when it's safe to return to the building. Thank you. Before, um, have we, before we move to the uh, main agenda, could I call on the leader of the council, Councillor Paul, who would like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It looks a few words, but it's in big, big print and big gaps. Uh, Madam Mayor, Following, following our annual council meeting last month, I find myself leave, leading the largest grouping with half the council in this chamber. I was privileged to be elected leader of this council without dissent. I thank each and every member, one of you, for re respecting the democratic mandate that we have for trusting me to appoint a cabinet and lead this council. Thank you. You can trust me to work with you on big issues affecting our council, our residents and our businesses. I will be seeking a consensus with the group leaders and with the council as a whole so that we can work together and deliver without delay and without prioritising party or personal ambition. Nevertheless, you have appointed me leader of the council. That office and that of my cabinet carry out responsibilities that cannot be delegated or shared. In return, I expect each and every one of you to allow my cabinet to ex exercise those responsibilities using the powers that they carry. We will not abuse your trust. We all know the coming year will be intense and a demanding one. Workers and families continue to face many challenges and there is big work ahead of us in continuing the transformation of this borough and this council. We must do everything possible within our power as a local authority to continue. It's great privilege, and it's a great privilege for me to be able to address this chamber tonight as the leader of Rugby Borough Council. I've been a member of this council since 2003, and as you can imagine, there have been many changes in the 20 years since then. This council and the borough we represent are completely different places. What has stayed the same, however, is the commitment of the elected members of this council to do the right thing for our communities that we represent. I have attended conferences and met colleagues from other local authorities, and it is my perception, and I think that many of, us, many of you share this view, that we here in Rugby, and Rugby is a special place, and it is unique. Yes, we are elected representatives of political parties, and yes, each of us approaches an issue from a particular point of view. But, and this is the way, we do not allow political ambition or opportunism to cloud our judgment, affect our debates, or prevent this council from meeting its obligations. We always find a way to work together and do to do the right thing for our residents and businesses. 
support workers and families and public services through the rising cost of living and deliver a first class council service. I give you all my commitment that will use this office to the very best of my ability. I will continue to reach out the hand of friendship across this chamber and our partners. I will continue to do everything in my power to attract jobs, investment and opportunities to this great town and borough. This is an incredible place, Madam Mayor, full of incredible people, and I know we can build an incredible future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor um, Have you got any apologies for absence, uh, Chief Officer? Oh. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and if I may, I'll just take this opportunity to ask councillors, because of the noise of the fans in the chamber today, if perhaps you're a bit closer to your microphone so that everybody can hear. Thank you. Madam Mayor, we have apologies today from Councillor Russell. Madam Mayor, may I say, uh, Councillor um, Lisa Parker, she's here. Oh. Thank you. We've, we've noticed Councillor uh, Lisa Parker's presence. Thank you. <laughs> to approve the minutes of the ordinary meeting of Council held on the 26th of April and the annual meeting held on the 18th of May 2023. I move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the Council held on the 26th of April 2023 and the annual meeting held on the 18th of May 2023 be approved and adopted. Who will second the motion? I will second you, Madam Mayor. Those in favour, please show. Those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. So, moving on to item three, declarations of interest. Can I remind members that when they declare interest, they must also declare the general nature of the of that interest? Are there any declarations? Uh, uh, are there any declarations under the non-pecuniary interest as defined by the council's code of conduct for councillors? Item number one on the agenda as a ward councillor. Okay. okay. Pecuniary interests as defined by the council's code of conduct for councillors. No. Notice under section 106, Local Government Finance Act 1992, non-payment of community charge or council tax. No. Moving on to the mayor's announcement. So, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the Windrush arrivals. The Windrush Day takes place on the 22nd of June. It honours a generation of Caribbean immigrants who moved to the UK in the late 1940s at the invitation of the British government. It is a chance to celebrate British Caribbean communities and acknowledge the sacrifices and contributions their generation and their de uh, descendants have made to British society. Today also is the Glenfell, uh, the Glenfell Tower Fire. Was, uh, it's the sixth anniversary. And uh, it's the sixth anniversary, and we, I would like to ask people just to pause for a few seconds to sort of, to think about the 72 people who lo lost their lives tragically, and they were cut short, and pay tribute to them, to those that have bere bereaved the survivors in the community of North Kensington. So, can just a few seconds, just to pause for a few seconds and to remember. Thank you. you. May seat it. So, moving on, the Armed Forces flag ceremony will be taking pl place at the Town Hall on Monday, the 19th, and it will be starting at 10:30. It is also my civic service on the 25th of June at St Andrew's Church. 
All members of this council have received invitations and details, so I look forward to seeing as many of you there as possible at both events. Freeman of the Borough and past Mayor James Shearer was recently honoured by the President of Pakistan with an award for services to Pakistan. Our congratulations go to James on this wonderful achievement. Since becoming Mayor, I have attended many events, including the Bike Fest, which was a fantastic day. The whole town was buzzing, with lots of great feedback from residents and businesses. Thank you to all of those who made the day such a success. I've attended uh, two events organised by Rugby Borough Council staff at the Rugby Art Gallery and Museum. The first was an evening of underwater adventure with swashbuckling pirates and magical mermaids. It was great to see so many families enjoying themselves. As I stepped through the door, a young pirate ran towards me, waving his plastic sword and said, give me your gold. <laughs> The second event uh, was the unveiling of the newly refurbished uh, rugby ball to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the game of rugby. Thank you to the staff for these fantastic events and for recognising the importance of working in collaboration with local businesses and other stakeholders. Finally, this week I launched the Mayor of Rugby's Facebook and Instagram pages, which I will use to promote events in rugby. Next week, I'll be launching the new Merrill blog with the aim of promoting the town and encouraging residents and visitors to visit the town and support town centre activities and businesses. Please, can you all follow me on the Mayor's uh, Instagram and blog and uh, social media to promote our town? And one final thing, today I finished work, I retired from work after 44 years service and I'm, I'm, I'm re what was really nice is a lot of money was collected by staff that will be going to my mayor's charity, the Rugby Might and Hospice. So, 44 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quite an emotional day. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, questions pursuant. Are there any questions, sir, Chief Executive? Madam Mayor, there are three questions this evening and the questions and responses have been circulated to all members prior to the meeting and have been published on the Council's website. The first question is from Councillor Slinger. He has submitted a question for the Leader of the Council, Councillor Poole, regarding the flying of the flag of the Gypsy Roma and Traveller community from the Town Hall during June, which is Gypsy Roma and Traveller History Month. Councillor Singer, have you got any supplementary questions? Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank the leader, Councillor Poole, for his thoughtful reply. I don't doubt Councillor Poole's commitment to equality, um, and I acknowledge his role as chair of the Council's Equality and Diversity Steering Group. I'm very impressed by and support the Council for flying the LGBTQ+ flag and I'm very glad to read in his reply that the E&D, the Equality and Diversity Steering Group, will develop a strategy that will engage with the Gypsy Roma and Traveller community uh, and consider uh, my question. I've spoken to members of the Gypsy Roma and Traveller community this week in the borough and they did mention to me about the prejudice that they sometimes suffer from. They spoke about wanting to be treated equally they spoke about misunderstanding and they supported anything that can be done to break down barriers. And I think a flag is symbolic and it sends a message and I think a flag should inspire action. And I think also, reflecting on this issue, that the community becomes stronger when we all understand one another. So I ask the leader that while, of course, flying the pride flag is very, very welcome, will he consider using executive powers to use the next two weeks of June, which is the Gypsy Roma and Traveller History Month, to fly a flag such as, although a lot bigger than this, to fly a flag such as this, which represents the Gypsy Roma and Traveller community, with a view to showing and making a statement displaying a symbol 
to show that they are an integral part of our community, as is every other part of the community, to encourage people to learn about this community during the Gypsy Roman Traveller History Month, and to show that we all condemn unequivocally racism and prejudice against this community. Thank you. Councillor Paul. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Schlinger, thank you for your comments. Uh, firstly, I am no longer the chair of the steering group. It is Councillor Mrs Garcia. Uh, I will take your comments to the officers and reply to you forthwith, whether it's a yes or a no for the flag, but the LGBTQ plus flag is very inclusive, as you know, and uh, I will support anything that's to do with LGBTQ plus and inclusivity. Um, I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any more questions? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The second question is from um, is from Councillor Sanderson. He submitted a question for the regulation and safety portfolio holder, Councillor Paul, regarding the installation of electric vehicle charging points in council-owned car parks. Any supplementary questions? Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I do have a supplementary to that. Um, can I thank Councillor Paul for his response? I was with you up to paragraph three. Um, but when we get into paragraph four, it all becomes a bit vague, to say the least. I am aware that the county is going to look again at its EV on-road charging points, because that is where a lot of those who live within the urban area are finding it very hard to gain access to an EV point. However, when you start talking about year two and year three, before we look at having uh, additional charging points at our two main car parks at New Bowl Road and Railway Terrace, I'm a bit concerned that that could have some impacts on our climate change net zero figures. Councillor Paul. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll refer your question to the regeneration group, which I understand you're a member of. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Chief Executive, are there any more questions? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The final question is also from Councillor Sanderson. Again, it's a question submitted for the regulation and safety portfolio holder, Councillor Paul, regarding responsibility for the opening and closing of the gates into the pedestrian area of High Street, Sheep Street and Marketplace. Any supplementary questions? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, my supplementary question is, um, the gates are there because the area is covered by uh, traffic regulation orders which means that they should be closed at 11 a.m. and then reopened at 4. Because it's being voluntarily done by Rugby First, who don't work on a Sunday, the gates are not closed on a Sunday. And Sunday has bec become the new Friday. It's the heaviest volume of footfall by families with their children or grandchildren in that area on a Sunday. In fact, there are more shops open on a Sunday than our other days, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I really, when um, Councillor Paul is raising this with the County Council, um, I think it'd be, the, the officers have told me they'd like to close the gates because they're having to chase cars round that area either threatening them with a ticket or issuing a ticket. We actually cut, cut down the workload of, of the enforcement officers if those gates were closed at the time that they should be closed and by the appropriate officer who's qualified and covered by the, tri by the TROs. Thank you, Madam Paul. Mayor. Thank Sorry, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll look into that for you and come back straight away, OK? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item six, to receive the report of Cabinet dated the 5th of June 2023. In submitting the report of Cabinet, 
If members wish to raise questions or to comment, will they please indicate they wish to do so when I call the item by standing up? Councillor Picker, will you move the confirmation and adoption of item one of the report of Cabinet of the 5th of June 2023? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I so move. Paragraph one, making of the Monks Kirby's neighbourhood plan. Are there any speakers? Uh, Madam Mayor, um, if I may make a point of order, please. Yeah. And um, obviously with the noise of the fan, I may have missed it, but I don't think there was any declaration of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interests from the side of the town hall other than Councillor Gilias. Um, I can only take what I read, uh, but we apparently have the most infamous allotment holder in the country in our midst. Uh, and then by the admission of the Conservative Party, that allotment facilitates a financial payment. So it's a pecuniary interest. And obviously we're going to discuss allotments coming up. So I did try and check, but Councillor Parker's uh, declaration of interest is eight years out of date. So there's something to think about, surely. Just... Do you want me to, to assist you, Madam Mayor, in terms of the point of order that's been raised by, by Councillor, Councillor Murray? Uh, yes, just, just to assist in terms of um, the, the point of order, in terms of the declaration of interest. Um, in terms of pecuniary interest, that is a matter for each councillor and each uh, individual councillor to determine. Uh, so this is very much, if it is the case, in terms of Lisa Parker to declare an interest. And uh, I suggest that that is, that is looked at following this meeting rather than within, within this debate at present. Madam Mayor, I'm perfectly willing to leave the, uh, the discussion and apologise to you personally for uh, any affront I may inadvertently have caused. But I'm perfectly happy to leave the... Uh, it, you know, in the interests of probity, I'm happy to, to leave the discussion. If, if well, it, if it on, is deemed that I need to, I'm yeah. happy uh, to uh, retire. Uh, okay. If, if that's what you wish to do, that's fine. If, if, if I can just again, if, if I can just come in here again, in terms of the item that's been debated, that's the adoption of the Monks Kirby neighbourhood plan. So it's a matter as for Lisa, for Councillor Parker to determine whether that she's prejudiced from, from a pecuniary interest point of view? I have no uh, pecuniary or personal interest in the allotments at Monks Kirby, but, you know, listen, I am perfectly happy to retire from the discussion. If that's what your advice is, then I will follow it, as always. Again, just, just, just to clarify, if, if uh, Councillor Parker doesn't have an allotment land in terms of Monks Kirby, as, as I said, it, it's, it's a decision for you, Councillor Park, but I'd much rather have this debate outside of the chamber rather than within the chamber. Can I call Councillor Roodhouse, please? Um, seeing that we've gone down this road, I'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll put it out there anyhow, but, you know, I can talk about it. Non-pecuniary non um, in relation to that, I do have a plot that lands down allotments and I sit on the allotment committee, so um, it's, it's quite clear. It's not prejudicial but it's non-pecuniary, which allows me to debate with, within that. So if, if we're going to do that, I'll place that on record um, uh, within it. I need to declare I have an allotment at Bilton Poorlands. Thank you. Anyone else to speak? Councillor Peter. topic this evening. Um, firstly, can I just congratulate you on your election as Mayor of Rugby, although perhaps not wish you a quiet retirement based on your uh, opening statement. Um, so the decision before us today, which I do feel I need to clarify, is the making of the Monks Kirby neighbourhood plan, which references allotments precisely once in passing. It is not to do with any other matter. Um, I do want to thank everyone who has been involved in putting together this neighbourhood plan, um, including Monks Kirby Parish Council, 
uh, local councillors, the residents of Monks Kirby and our officers here at the Borough Council. Um, for all the way in which we appear to have derailed this already, neighbourhood plans are in fact a very important part of our local planning strategy and we want to encourage all areas to take them on. Uh, we have a number within the borough but further neighbourhood plans will be looked on very favourably. Um, they allow local areas to determine the development in their area, plan and build confidence in the planning system. They are fundamentally a very good thing. Uh, this plan has gone through consultation, it's gone through extensive engagement with the local community, it's been assessed by the inspector and then it's been approved overwhelmingly by a referendum on May the 4th, uh, which I believe was over 80% in favour. Um, therefore, there is no reason at all for this council to do anything other than, as recommended, make this neighbourhood plan and allow it to form part of our development strategy for the people of Monks Kirby without any further amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any further speakers? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm afraid uh, I've got to uh, admit that I've been terrible in the previous life because I've been a parish councillor since 1989. You know, so, um, can you hear? So, um, in 1989, of course, um, I live in the neighbouring parish of Paleton, which, uh, if I look through my um, bedroom window, I can see the uh, ancient church of St. Edith's founded by uh, the daughter of Alfred the Great in 917. That's history on your doorstep. Fantastic place. And in order to have that history, you've got to have proper custodians of that history. And when we built, worked up to the end of the 90s, when we were encouraged by the Countryside Agency, led by Linda Ridgely, to create a neighbourhood plan, Monks Kirby was indeed the very first village to create a village design statement which was commended by this council. And only last night, I attended a parish council meeting, like I do every month at Monks Kirby, and there's never ever been a mention of an allotment. No need for allotment, because Monks Kirby Parish Council don't own any allotments, and neither do they rent any, and they've got no due restriction over allotments whatsoever in the parish of Monks Kirby. So there's no need for this amendment at all. Can I, can I just come, come in here, Madam Mayor? It's, it's important that clearly the, the amendment has been circulated prior, prior to, to, to this meeting, but it is important that Councillor Moran uh, proposes uh, th this amendment and that thereafter we have the debate in respect of the proposed amendment that's come forward. So I think first and foremost, I would suggest, Madam Mayor, that we allow Councillor Moran to formally put his, his amendment forward. Councillor Moran. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Gillias, I've got a huge amount of respect for you. I admire the work that you do in your, uh, in your local uh, community. Um, it's a great neighbourhood plan. I've had the benefit of work looking at all sorts of neighbourhood plans over the years. The history and character of Monks Kirby clearly comes out. It's a great, great neighbourhood plan. Very happy to, to support it. Um, I equally, um, uh, through, through passing interest, am aware of the uh, Small Holdings and Allotments Act 1908, and all I'm suggesting is that the Parish Council are reminded of that, that uh, any allotments that may become available over, over the coming uh, years um, are put to the, uh, to the benefit and to the usage of uh, residents of the parish, although I understand there may be a, a friendly amendment uh, in which case that, that jurisdiction could be the, across the borough. But great, it's a great neighbourhood plan, just needs a small uh, tweak, that's all. Thank you. Any more speakers? <clears throat> Have we got a seconder for the amendment? So you can do the seconding first if you want, but I need to speak as well. You can't hear me. Is it something to do with a fan? <laughs> okay, I would like to speak on this. Uh, do you want to just check the, the seconder wants to go first or what? Council Robinson, are you seconding the, uh, the amendment and are you reserving your right to speak or are you going to speak now? 
Yes, I'm going to reserve my okay. right to speak, and yes, I second. Okay. First of all, this is a great neighbourhood plan, and I'm glad that that is recognised across this chamber. But what I would say is that I find that the amendment that has been proposed is totally disrespectful of the work that has been put in by that community. And by, it wasn't done by the parish council, it was done by a group of people who were working to the parish council. And to get those people to come forward and engage in all the things that a, a neighbourhood plan involves is absolutely crucial to get it delivered. And the consultation that has gone on and the involvement of the community, I don't think that they will feel very, very happy about a letter from our head of growth and investment about being reminded about their responsibilities when actually they're delivering their responsibilities in putting forward a neighbourhood plan for their communities. I feel that what you have proposed is extremely disrespectful of their work. Councillor Roodhouse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just wanted to move a, a friendly amendment, which is in the last line, where it talks about the parish of Monks Kirby, delete and insert the words borough. I, I, I totally congratulate Monks Kirby and the neighbourhood plan and the process that's gone through, and it is a good plan. I think you know, I recognise the work that goes in uh, to that. But this is a slightly broad, broader point, and the reason why we wanted to insert the word borough is there is a, there is a shortage of allotment land uh, within the borough and also a shortage of allotments and there are waiting lists at most allotment sites uh, around this borough as well. So this is a matter of oh, just asking, delegating the authority to the Chief Officer to actually write that letter to remind that, for ask them to think about that and parishes to do that. As we know in Walston for instance and the fights that have gone on there over allotment land uh, and house building as well. So you know, we, we need to sort of start thinking about these particular issues as well and we'll be, you know, if, if, if the uh, mover and the seconder of the amendment um, are willing to accept our uh, borough words and the deletion of that, we'll be supporting it. Can I, can I second reserve the right? Any other speakers? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I do fear that we, we have perhaps touched on a wider point of debate within the, uh, the council here. Um, I don't think any of us would argue against what Councillor Roodhouse has just said about uh, more allotments, um, and certainly as someone who's turned their back garden into essentially their own personal allotment, it's certainly something that I, I have some very strong feelings about. I would just gently point out that growth and investment isn't about the growing of vegetables, and I'm not 100% certain that this line of discussion actually sits within this portfolio uh, with the Chief Officer for Growth and Investment, and that perhaps if others were minded to do so, that perhaps we can take this away from the Monks Kirby neighbourhood plan, where I do fear we're straying away from matters of relevance to the item before us, and perhaps come forward with perhaps this is something that scrutiny can look at because whilst I'm not objecting to the wider points that are being made this item is about the Monks Kirby neighborhood plan and nothing else thank you councillor picker is that an amendment you're proposing <laughs> uh, in terms of perhaps getting scrutiny to look at this issue yes I'm happy to propose that amendment got a seconder Thank you, Councillor Paul. When it works, yes, I'll second it, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Councillor Garcia. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just feel that as a resident of Monks Kirby and obviously um, a councillor for Monks Kirby, I've got to put my penneth worth in. And actually, do you know what? I appreciate everybody in this chamber. It's very difficult and it's very difficult standing up for people that we represent. But I do feel that you've let yourselves down this time. You're trying to score cheap points, and it's just not acceptable, really. Monks Kirby is a very, very proactive community, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. not yeah, just yeah. parish council. Um, but they have worked tirelessly to get this plan done. 
And I, let me tell you that if anybody had come to any of those parish meetings and asked for an allotment, it would be in the parish plan. But because they haven't asked, and because in Monks Kirby and Paleton we have allotments that nobody takes, there's no reason for it to be in. So thank you very much for listening to me, and I hope you'll reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Any more speakers, please? Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think there's a, a bit of a myth going around this council that neighbourhood plans are only for the Purdue of the rural areas, for the local parishes. They're not. Neighbourhood plans can apply to any area that wishes to move one forward. Now, that can include recreational and amenity land within that local plan. Now, if clearly, if there are allotments that are not being used, that's fine. If there are allotments that perhaps people are not aware of in the borough and they might want to take one up in Monks Kirby, then give, them, give people the opportunity to take up those allotments if they, if through our normal channels. But it, local plans are not just uh, about... Uh, what the parish council thinks or what a, group, you know, a small group of residents think. They're about what's, what was in with the local plan. Point of order, please. A point of order, please. Just st stand up, please. Okay. Thank you. The actual amendment says, delegated authority be granted to the Chief Officer of Growth and Investment to write to Monks Kirby Parish Council to ensure lettings in respect of allotment land are made in, to the residents of the parish of Monks Kirby as per its statutory obligations. It is not about the wider borough. This is about the parish of Monks Kirby. That is a point of order with regard to the last statement. Um, I, just, just to clarify, um, I'm very happy to accept the friendly amendment that the wording is replaced by the borough of Rugby. Um, and look, you know, while I'm on my feet, I want to be absolutely clear. There is absolutely no insult whatsoever in terms of the, to the parish council or any volunteers that prepared this neighbourhood plan. It's the opposite. We're saying it's a great piece of work. And um, forgive me, but it's rather sanctimonious, kind of screaming about sort of political point scoring. There's a reason we're talking about allotments being misused, and it didn't start and originate from this side of the town hall. Uh, 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 uh. Any more speakers, please? Yeah, point of order, Madam Mayor. Am I being accused of something? Misused was the word used. What, what allegation is being made? Can I have a clarification, please? <laughs> I'm not sure, but we'll clarify that for you, Councillor Parker. I will ask after to speak to you later on. Um, but what we're going to do now, is there any more speakers? Madam Mayor, I'd like the gentleman to retract his comment. If he's not prepared to substantiate it with evidence, I would like it retracted in open chamber. I'm... Uh, 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 hang on a minute. Sit down. I've told you we will reply to you after the meeting, after I will speak to you. OK. Right, can we please start by taking a vote on the amendment that Councillor Picker... Oh, oh sorry. Robert, sorry, I didn't see you. That was not... I know, I know. I've been there too. I know how difficult it is to see everybody. Um, what I would say is, with this amendment, why are we only singling out uh, Monks Kirby? There are a lot of area in, in the borough that have got uh, allotment. Then everybody will have to re uh, amend it and as far as I know, because having been a parish councillor myself, how hard people have worked on their neighbourhood plan. Now for us to go and dictate to them, they've got to change it. If they were deliberately doing something wrong, fair enough. It's our duty, it's AFTAB's duty and all this to, to put them in the right direction. But this is just petty. It's just telling some parish councillors the people who's worked hard on this neighborhood plan, what they should be doing. And uh, I don't agree with this, 
because if we are forcing Monks Kirby to do that, then Hilmorton, Dunchurch, everybody will have to do have the same rule. And then we'll have to come to the fact that if we are expecting allotment only to be given to people living in that area, there might be a point where people in that area do not want that allotment, they don't want to do gardening, then they will just be left like that, derelict. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any more speakers, please? Councillor Robinson, would you like to speak? Hello. Um, I would just say thank you to uh, my colleague across the chamber, and I don't know your name yet, and I apologise, and I'll come and meet you afterwards, and we will um, exchange um, niceties. Um, I think what you've done is just help present the, the case, really, for the amendment, which speaks about access, restricting access to people within the borough of rugby. Um, and there is, you're right, there is a wider principle here, and it is because the, the residents of rugby are asking for allotments and there are, I've, I've done the ringing round um, and I can give you the data. Uh, we've got um, Lansdowne Road, uh, sorry, Lansdowne allotments and um, uh, Eastlands uh, allotments. They've been closed to, to their wait, their waiting list have been closed since April 2021. Um, Fremantle Road, they've, for the last uh, several years, they've had at least 10 people on their waiting list per year. So you're right, it is a wider point. Um, it, is, it isn't about attacking Monks Kirby. They have got an excellent local plan. This is an opportunity because they have mentioned allotments as an example of a direction of travel that might happen. It's, it's within there. It is a, it, it is a topical matter, um, but it's a matter for the people of rugby. Allotments are great for our well-being. Uh, they put food on our table. Um, they put smiles on our faces as we eat our homegrown vegetables. So um, it almost seems petty to object it, I would say. So thank you. Thank you. Any more speakers, please? If not, I'm going to move. Just, uh, just a point of clarification, Madam Mayor, and, 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 I, and I think it's important to clarify to all members in terms of the proposed amendment. So the proposed amendment is adding an additional, um, an additional limb, a number four, within the recommendation before members. It is, in effect, requesting uh, the council to write to Monks Kirby in terms of the statutory obligations which are twofold in respect of both the allocation and letting uh, in respect of allo uh, allotments within within the borough of Rugby and the the, lib the Liberal Democrat uh, amendment clarifies that particular letting um, it does not remove the proposed recommendation in terms of the formal adoption of uh, of the neighbourhood plan, and I think that's important to to, to to clarify. So just to be clear, the first amendment that I'm taking is from Councillor Picker, which was seconded by Councillor Paul. All of those in favour, please show. Uh, just uh, oh. apologies, Madam Mayor. I think it's important just to. Uh, uh, again, a point of clarification in terms of standing orders. We have uh, a proposal in terms of the, the amendment that's been proposed by, by Councillor Moran. We have a friendly amendment by the Liberal Democrat group, and thereafter there will be a vote taken on that in the first instance. Uh, it's a matter for, for Councillor Moran as to whether he's willing to accept the friendly amendment by, by Councillor Picker. Um, in, in respect of the um, delegation down to scrutiny committee. So I think first and foremost is whether Councillor Moran can clarify whether he accepts that friendly amendment. And if he doesn't, then thereafter we'll, we'll take a vote in terms of the, the first amendment that's been put before members. Councillor Moran. I'm happy to accept the friendly amendment from the Liberal Democrats, but not the amendment from Councillor Pickett, no. Thank you. And Councillor Roodhouse, are you uh, willing to accept the friendly amendment to your amendment? Right, that's very good. Okay, so we'll go to the amendment that the amendment that Councillor Pick put forward. Uh, although, uh, I, oh. <laughs> apologies, Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll just clarify again. Given that Councillor Moran hasn't accepted the friendly amendment by Councillor Picker. Can we please take the vote in respect of 
the uh, proposal by <laughs> Councillor Moran, seconded by, by yes. Councillor Robinson, and thereafter the friendly amendment by uh, Councillor proposed by Councillor Roodhouse. I'm taking over. Right. We'll all those in favour of Councillor Pick uh, Picker's um, amendment, please show. Okay. Okay. All those against? Motion is defeated. The motion is defeated. So now we can take a vote. Um, Councillor Roodhouse's friendly okay. amendment. So, Councillor Roodhouse, we're now taking a vote on your friendly amendment. All those in favour of Councillor Roodhouse's friendly amendment, please show. Okay. All those against? The amendments carry, thank you. It's very, yeah. Moving on to notice of motion pursuant to standing order 11. Are there any motions of notice to consider, Chief Executive? There are no motions to consider, Madam Mayor. There is none, Madam Mayor. Common seal. I move that the common seal be affixed to the various orders, deeds and documents referred to in the agenda. Who will second the motion? I will second the motion, Madam Mayor. Those in favour, please show. Those against, please show. The motion is carried. Motion to exclude the public under section 100A, uh, subsection 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, to consider and pass the following resolution. Under section 100A, section 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the following item on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of information defined in paragraph 2 and 3 of the Schedule 12A of the Act. I so move. Who will second? I will second the motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Those in favour, please show. Thank you. Those against, please show. The motion is carried. That concludes the public part of the meeting. Please can we clear the public? Thank you. And turn off the live stream.